I, I deliberately wanted there to be no guns in Eastern Promises, um, because partly because of the culture of the Russian gangsters. Not that they don't use guns, of course they do. But I was really thinking of the atavistic, the primitive, the ancient sort of Russian, pre-Russian, pre-Soviet Union culture of Russia and trying to give some sense of that without being too obvious about it, uh, that it's very intimate and very emotional and very almost religious, and ritualistic. And that means guns do not lend themselves to that. Guns lend themselves to disconnection. It's, it's very easy to be disconnected from someone when you shoot them. It's much harder to be disconnected if you're stabbing them with a knife or strangling them or punching them. You know, then it's very physical and you're very much involved in that other person's body and mind and so on. And um, that's the way I felt that these criminals were. And so I decided to just have guns not be a part of the story. You said almost religious. It almost yes. uh, feels like some kind of um, Christmas story in a way. Yes. Um, which is um, strange uh, knowing that you are an atheist. Yeah. Well, I'm an atheist, but not all my characters are atheists. And uh, um, so it's true that I don't think about God ever as part of my life or anything. But if you are a dramatist and you are working with characters who come from a particular culture, you have to accept their understanding of life and with passion, you know. So um, the Nikolai character, I'm pretty sure he believes in God, you know. And uh, most of the other characters in the movie do too. Some of them are Muslim, some of them are uh, Eastern Orthodox, and that's a part of their life, a part of their understanding of suffering, um, because everybody in life suffers, but not everybody thinks of that in religious terms. These people do, and they think of suffering as a way to salvation, also in religious terms. And so, as 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 a sort of their their I am their God really you know <laughs> I'm creating them, but so that's religious in itself. Um, so the, the, I am a very hardcore atheist, believe me. But um, I, you you become like an actor really as a director or a writer. You must take on the character as that character is, and believe in it as you're playing it. You know. Um, and allow that character to exist as he would exist. So that's really what, what that's all about. So I have no problem with characters who are religious and believe in God. I, I would have a problem if that was the point of the whole story because that bores me, you know, because I just don't have any intellectual or emotional respect for it, frankly. Um, but uh, as you know, in, in, in Eastern Promises, that is not the primary sort of dramatic engine. There is a very impressive scene in the bathroom. Uh, I was wondering, what do you have to do to, to get such a, such a moment? Uh, mm -hmm. What is required uh, in terms of, I don't know, trust or...? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it is a scene like the, the knife fight in the... in the... Uh, in the uh, steam bath is is a matter of trust totally uh, and it's a matter of artistic integrity and it's a matter of understanding it's a, a understanding what is required and accepting it and not being afraid of it of course most of that had to do with Vigo I mean he had to we, we sort of looked at it and we said I said because in the script it just said there's a fight you know they didn't, didn't talk about where the towels were or what you saw or what you didn't see so it was for us the stunt coordinator, me and Vigo, to work out. Um, and also uh, the production designer, Carol Spear, because I said, I want a theater, you know, I want a theater for this ballet. Um, so I need different interesting angles and parts of rooms and so on. She was creating that. Um, and then with Vigo, 
He ultimately he said, well, it will be ridiculous to try to have a towel around me all the time, so I obviously must do it naked. And I said, yeah. And that was all we talked about, that was it. I don't say that that was easy for him, uh, but, uh, but he didn't make it difficult for me. But whatever he had to do in his mind to do that, because he hadn't done that before, not that. Uh, I don't think there are many actors who have done that before. Um, he, uh, he just, he, he, did, he did it himself in his own head. He, uh, once he said, this has to be this way, then there was no restrictions on me, what angle, what lens, what we see, what we don't see. Uh, as a, but the way I work, I always have monitors, lots of them, and I always allow my actors to see whatever they want to see. Not just in this case, not just with Vigo, but any. And some actors really are very interested to see that last take and to th see what they did to say maybe refine it. And some directors are afraid of that because they're worried that the actor won't like himself or it'll take too much time or whatever. I don't feel that way. I feel it's open to everybody. Of course, in this case, it was restricted because he was naked. But for Vigo, he could see whatever he wanted to see. And he wasn't obsessed with it particularly, you know. Um, but it's a comfort to know that I'm not trying to hide anything. It's all there, you know. And likewise, in the editing, I showed him everything. There was no, you know. So it, it is a matter of trust. Uh, it was our second movie together. And we, we, we knew each other well, you know, our sensibility and so on. So it was, I don't think... Um, it takes a lot of those things coming together, though, but mostly the relationships of the people for something like that to be done.